come you always have a movie with a white cop and a black cop, and it's always a black cop that's flirting with the females as if he's never seen vagina before? Now, I use the V word because considering the lines that he uses on the women, it's obvious that he sees vagina before lady. And you'll see their tongues just wagging, especially for a white chick who usually isn't even all that hot. And it's hard for me to believe that a white man actually directed this music video for the R&B group Cameo um, for their song Candy. In fact, it was the first music video to be made in HD back in 1986. And I, I didn't understand why a white man would want to see this, even though black men had been brutally tortured and lynched, even if they glanced at a white woman not that long ago. But... Look at this video. If you examine this video, don't some of these images look familiar? Mm-hmm. And there are many phallic symbols in this movie as well. The Mandingo stereotypical concept was invented by white slave owners who promoted the notion that African slaves were animalistic and bestial in nature, asserting, for example, that in the Negro all the passions, emotions, and ambitions are almost wholly subservient to the sexual instinct. And this construction of the oversexed black male and attaching the large penis parlayed perfectly into the notions of black bestiality and primitivism. Now, describing slaves in this way as animalistic allowed them to justify the wealth, privilege, and social benefits they gained through slavery as a moral action since they did not see slaves as fully human. And in post-Reconstruction United States, black buck, was a racial slur used to describe black men who defies white will and is largely destructive to American society. He is usually hot-tempered, excessively violent, unintelligent, and eager to sexually assault young women, especially white virgins. Most often, any attempt to restrain, reprimand, or re-educate the individual will fail, necessitating the individual's immediate execution. Now, the media, i.e. Hollywood, has always been used to shift and control the psyche. Let me read something to you from the site. Certain propaganda films announced their messages very early. During World War I, various governments made the first films with overt national propaganda messages. Government and health agencies, however, had already realized that film offered powerful forms of persuasion and education and sponsored or subsidized such films as Edison's The Fly Pest, 1909, warning about diseases carried by houseflies. But it may be that films convey and instruct best when they least seem to be doing so. Now, D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation, this was one of the very first films produced, conveniently released post-Reconstruction era during the time of World War I, when many black men fought in the war, hoping to be seen as equals, equally worthy of everything this country has to offer and obtain. Blacks were hoping to obtain rights along with land and opportunities, taking advantage of all that they could. But unfortunately, there are those in power who just cannot handle the idea of their superiority structure being slightly altered. So they had to fabricate warnings. And they too took advantage of film in Hollywood. Now the movie Birth of a Nation showed freed black men obtaining positions of power and chasing or hunting innocent white virgins. One, she jumped to her death to avoid being raped by a black man. And although there are those who argue that King Kong has nothing to do with race, um, those who know their history know better. King Kong gives an image of this dark beast getting loose and destroying the city in pursuit of a fair maiden. Now, it is not ironic that these movies came out around a time that many lynchings occurred and many black communities were bombed and burned to the ground. And this is why we still see the black buck and mandingo stereotypical images in movies, ads, etc. The masses of ignorant white men will allow these fictional images to get them enraged. However, the more intellectual races, or the real races, because they have the real power, they know that in order to keep fellow white men enraged, and to get white men enraged who may become possibly sympathetic to blacks, they have to keep these images pumping. Although slavery had already been abolished when Birth of a Nation was released, there was, obviously, still a warning that those behind the film wanted white America to take heed to. 
and they needed a way to have themselves seen as justified and less brute for their brutality against blacks by painting the blacks as brutes, savages, etc., and making themselves look more as heroes. But see, it's done today in a more slick way. And this is the message to white America. You give a black man a little rope, money, opportunity, status, and this is what's going to happen. These black buck and mandingo images were also used in the past to keep white women in fear of black men, although that may have ended up kindling a stronger fire or inner desire within white women. Considering that Tina Marie chose to be with a black man and showed him fire and desire, and it was not just him lusting over her, she was dumped by white America. But today, however, they will even play on those images of white women lusting after black men as well, if that means that they can get fellow white brethren even angrier, you know? And these images serve an even greater purpose in more recent times. They are used to keep the black man off focus. You can't win a battle if you're sleeping with the enemy. Like, I can try to say that I'm still black and proud while we're married to a white man, but if I'm truly, I mean truly in love with him, it's only natural that I'd feel hesitant to speak against white people, even if... I were justified. You know, I just couldn't do it the same. And it wouldn't be fair to him. So I just find myself letting it go altogether. And you cannot truly love your white woman yet be Malcolm X. I mean, it's not happening. And the white man is not dumb. He knows that these are images that many black men want to see. And he realized that some black men think that they're pissing off the man by, you know, showing him these images with white women. So they played on these images during the black exploitation era, which is also during the time of um, the idealisms of black nationalism was spreading. But see, they played on this, twisting the messages of what black power really is. And black men should realize that the white man is promoting a lot of this, using these images and using these usually unwanted white women as agents. Only the ignorant fools are the ones that think that they are losing their women. But it is those fools that the real races play on with these images. Get it? And now, the newest purpose for the Mendingo image to serve is to get into the head of the black woman. You see, these white men are watching us, and they see the war that's brewing between black men and black women in these message forums, YouTube videos, etc. They see what's going on between us. So they put more focus on black men with non-black women, not necessarily just white women. Although the majority of athletes, etc., are still with black women for the most part, they'll still choose to focus on the Kardashian sisters, you know. They want to make black women think that black men will abandon us as soon as he gets the opportunity to. See, this is the objective. Get black women more and more bitter with black men have CNN specials on how many are single, unmarried and all that, talk about how many black men are in prison, are homosexual with white women, etc., etc., and make sure that in the end you let them realize their options. Now you're going to see more and more and more promotion of this in 2011, I guarantee you. Soon they will be talking about something new. But to my fellow sisters, I say don't be fooled by these images. These same white men trying to get black women to think of something new are also the ones bashing black women in commercials trying to make black men hate us. They are also bashing us because they're upset that the majority of us are not interested in their asses. But see, this isn't about trying to unite black women with white men. They just don't want us pursuing black men because you first break up a people by starting with the family or man and woman. That's how you first destroy a people. White men, they may hook up with some Asian women, talk about them being hot, but as a whole, not individually, as a whole, they know better than to promote interracial relationships as we do all over the damn internet. They realize that they can't stay powerful as a people without the support of the white woman, and they want their race to stay pure. And whether or not we flock to them, as long as we lose desire for the black men, they're cool as long as we can no longer reproduce. You see, genocide is the overall objective. So stop falling for the fiction.